Hi, I'm Dr. Kathy Gindon from the Suncoast Youth Conservation Center in Apollo Beach, and you're watching the Tampa Bay Community Network. Hi, I'm Bill Hodges, and this is Spotlight on Government. Well, we're stretching the point a little bit today, but you'll see there's a government connection with it. I have Dr. Kathy Gindon at the Sun Coast Youth Conservation Center. Correct. Well, that's, that's a word. <laughs> it is. Sun Coast Youth Conservation Center. But you got it. <laughs> it's a big title. It is. Can you get it all on your, I guess you could get it. No. It took two lines. It's actually worse on the shirt because the Sun Coast <laughs> for short, the Sun Coast Youth Conservation Center is part of uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife's, are you ready? The acronym is bigger. The Florida Youth Conservation Center's Network. Whoa, yeah. another word. Exactly, <laughs> so that new, the Youth Network is actually a fairly new initiative that Florida Fish and Wildlife, which is Florida's state government that takes care and protects our natural resources. They have all these different groups within the FWC. So they have the researchers that do the science to, to study all of Florida's wonderful natural resources that are out there. And then the research from the science gets passed on to our managers. Then they create the new rules and regulations that we should follow as responsible citizens here in Florida. And then we have our law enforcement officers who take care of that. So then the agency decided that we have the Research Institute, we have the management for freshwater and saltwater fisheries and our hunting and game managers, and we have our law enforcement officers, and each of those different divisions does a lot of education and outreach. But the agency as a whole didn't really have sort of a centralized home base home base yeah. yeah so they created about five years ago they came up with this youth network i understand the kids call you dr g is that right that's true yes i, I kind of like that may i use that same you words? can certainly use dr g <laughs> i was over there myself oh golly it has to be six six months to a year ago and i went to a class that was set up by my friend who was then commandant or commander of the uh, Coast Guard Auxiliary Squadron out there, Gary Mull. Yes. And I just fell in love with the place, the potential of it, all the things going on. And I was able to track you down and invite you to come on the show. But it's taken that long to get <laughs> that busy schedule of yours That's and true. our shooting schedule together. So and I'm really excited you came through what amounted to a, a tropical storm today ah, to get here. Good old Emily. Well, thank you for your perseverance. I'm happy to be here. It, it's a wonderful place. Let's talk about where it's located so that people will get an idea how and where they can go to see it. Sure. The Sun Coast is a new youth center that's located in Apollo Beach. We're on Dickman Road about one mile south of the Manatee Viewing Center. So if you've ever been across from the Big Bend Power Plant, Tampa Electric Company, Tico right for Right down short, the street. Literally right down the street. Um, the Sun Coast is actually a public-private partnership with Tampa Electric Company and the Florida Aquarium with Florida Fish and Wildlife as one of those three partners. But the really USF cool... USF is involved along the well, way somewhere too, aren't they? Yeah, well, that's just it. Um, Are they silent partner? They're kind of the silent partner. <laughs> so USF and University of Florida both will have... University of Florida has a faculty member on site right now as well as some graduate students. And in the hopefully near future, in the center of the property, um, there will be a renewable energy demonstration center where USF students from the Department of Engineering will be doing their own research for their oh, graduate really? studies. Yeah. I, I liked it. It's built on pilings. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. That's it's a requirement. <laughs> yeah, because, of the, because it's so close to the bay. And underneath there is the classroom space where they have the tables and all sorts of things. Yeah, we have, we have seats under. We've got about 12 eight-foot picnic tables underneath the building for an outdoor classroom. But even since you've been there, we've added on another outdoor pavilion that has picnic table space as well as some open space at one end so that if you 
had to get in out of the elements or if you had a speaker doing something where you wanted to set up table space or have a, a under the roof space to do an activity, you could. And we've also now, uh, we just got, or we received this certificate of occupancy on our new kayak storage pavilion. So now we've got a fleet of 40 kayaks that really? we are able to do to take people out on paddling excursions through the wetlands on the eastern shores of Tampa Bay. Let's drop back to your background. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a, a PhD in what? My PhD is from University of South Florida College of Marine Science. Okay. So I did all of my all of my studies throughout school have all been related to marine fisheries. So I am a trained fisheries biologist doing research since day one. Um, and back in 2014, I went to discuss my five-year research plan with my supervisor at that time. And he said, put that away. I know what you do. I have to talk to you about something new. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was at that time where they told me about this new partnership starting up in Apollo Beach. And I was oh. asked if I would be its director to create it. When I moved to Apollo Beach, it was a grassy field. Well, it's not that anymore. It is not that anymore. Not even close. We've, the youth center, the Suncoast Youth Center, is actually the first phase of construction for the site. There's several other buildings and things going on out there. Yeah, so our the Florida Aquarium will be staffing and maintaining a sea turtle hospital and rehabilitation center. That is under construction now and should be finished by by, by fall, October-ish maybe. I say Christmas just because <laughs> <It's> construction. <laughs> here in Florida, yeah, that sounds about Today's right. Today's a rain day. <laughs> so the Sea Turtle Hospital is next. Um, there are a series of greenhouses. People, if you drive by and you see these sort of glass structures, you'd think like a greenhouse where you would uh -huh. grow plants. But that's actually where they are using the greenhouses to do coral research. Oh, really? And, yeah, so they're, they're doing collecting genotypes for coral research. Um, next, you know, during the month of August is when the coral spawn, and there'll be a group of our group, uh, there'll be a group of our researchers from the Florida Aquarium and the university's FWC partnering with the Moat Marine Lab down in the Keys. It's a really big event, a very collaborative event to so go they'll bring the for samples the spawning. back from the Keys to Apollo exactly. Beach? Exactly, and there'll be a lot of baby coral counting going on in August. <laughs> you know, that's strange. I, I don't know, a lot of people probably feel the same way I do. I think of coral as being a stony thing. I don't think of it being, although I know intellectually it's live. <laughs> it is an animal. <laughs> yep. And they are about to spawn and all the babies will be coming back. So, And they've been doing all kinds of research on staghorn coral. They have some colonies of pillar coral in the greenhouses right now and they will be eventually moving into some elkhorn coral. We have researchers on site. Uh, one, one of the folks from University of Florida just finished her master's degree looking at long spine sea urchin ecology and the interaction and the role of the sea urchin on the reef to help keep the algae clean from the coral reefs to keep the reef systems healthy. Are, are we doing anything research-wise there on the bay itself, Tampa Bay? There is a, there is a program um, looking at sea turtles. So they are actually going out they periodically will go out and do these surveys and transect. They have the, the bay is divided into different sections and they go out to try and capture sea turtles just to get an idea to do what types of species, how many of the different kinds of species. There's also an angler intercept survey going on where they're talking to the anglers who are fishing from the beaches and piers to see if anglers are actually catching sea turtles and is there an educational component that's needed to let anglers know what to do in the event of a sea turtle potentially swallowing a fish hook. I, I don't even, there's another thing I guess, I hope everybody's a lot smarter than I am, but I don't even think of sea turtles in Tampa Bay. I think of them more on the coast uh, on, you know, rather than Along being right here yeah, yeah, on like the Gulf. So did they breed in here too or? No, or? no, no the nesting for turtles is pretty much out all, on the beach. On the beach. Which is but probably they do come in here people. to feed or whatever? Yes, that's what they, the feeding grounds are gonna be up inside the bay. Oh. That's what they think, that's what they're looking into. That's what they're trying to show, whether, mm -hmm. whether or not this is the case. What parts of the bay, yeah. All right, let's talk about the Children's Center in particular. What do you do there year in and year out? So, how does a year go by, I guess? Sure. How do you interact with the children or the general public? So the, the facility itself is pretty much a Monday through Friday facility. 
And our educational programs within the youth network for our agency, Florida Fish and Wildlife, we focus on teaching three core topics. And those are fishing, boating, and wildlife discovery. So for our center at the Sun Coast, right there on, in Apollo Beach, because we're located on the eastern shore of Tampa Bay, we focus on saltwater fishing and teaching kids about fisheries. We also have, obviously, our boating focuses on paddle sports with kayaks. We also have some stand-up paddle boards. And then the wildlife discovery programs, everything is hands-on marine science and will be about Tampa Bay. The mission is we're trying to create that next generation of kids that care about Florida's fish and wildlife resources because there's so many and so many people here in Hillsborough County or even in the Bay Area in general, even though they live here, they never get a chance to go out and see it and experience it and get wet and get muddy. And so we're trying to make that a fun opportunity for them to come and learn and do it in a safe way. We were just talking, I was talking with uh, City Commissioner Vieira about getting children involved. Get these children moved in the right direction about the bay and what they need to do. I know my friend Gary Mull does some boating safety things and that mm -hmm. nature out there. Uh, all of this is so important. Yeah. And How do they get to your facility? So our, they all, to have a group come and visit. So during the school year, we are a school field trip site. We focus our programs for anyone between grades three through grade 12. We do all of our, all of our programming that we do is going to be a conservation education lesson and we weave that into the, to the core standards that teachers are required to teach in the classroom. So they can come to us, reach out to us via email, telephone, they can just, it's just that simple. If there's space on the calendar. And they arrange for the from school to bring them out there? Right. My, our programming is free. The trick for the teacher or the group leader, the scout master, is that they have to arrange for the transportation. But otherwise, our programming is free. But it's Monday through Friday. It is Monday through Friday. And then uh, about once a quarter, we try and do a weekend event that we will open up to the public. I mean, we're here. We're a community center. We're new to Hillsborough County. We've only had a certificate of occupancy. for a, it's, We're about to come on our one-year anniversary. <laughs> so we're relatively new. <laughs> we just did our January. It's a beautiful building. Yeah, though. January 2017 was our first school semester. And we ran our first summer day camp programs during this, this past summer. Oh, so, so you do have a summer daycare program. Day camp. Yes. Day camp program. It's a Monday through Friday, one week long day camp program. And it's just one week out of the summer? Or the, is it every it's, other week? or? It's one week out of the summer. Um, we did we, this summer because it was our first summer. I was a little bit timid. I wanted to make sure <laughs> we had everything ready to go. So we did a group. We did saltwater fish camp for elementary grades three through five, and then I did a second week, which was uh, saltwater fish camps for middle school. Okay, and then we did it with kayak adventures the same way. All right, if I were a teacher or a parent, and I'm mm -hmm. thinking, okay, saltwater fish camp, what does that involve? So this year, this was our first season, so we focused it for beginners. So if you were gonna bring your child to our saltwater fish camp program, you're gonna come and you're gonna learn the basics of what you would need to go fishing on your own and feel comfortable as a youth going fishing on your own without having to have a car to get you there. So when they came, when they come to the camp, they're going to learn how to tie knots. They're going to learn how to properly catch and release a fish without hurting it to increase its chance for survival. Mm -hmm. But they're also gonna learn how to read the rules and regulations and measure their fish to determine whether or not it's a fish you could take home for dinner, if you wanted to take that fish home for dinner. They also are going to leave at the end of the week. They got a tackle box filled with tackle. They got a rod and a reel, a copy of the regs, and a nice little towel to wipe their hands on. And um, at the end of the week, the, we bought two-piece rods so that they could just you know, take it apart. Mm -hmm. And they learned how to rig it from the beginning on so that they can just hop on a bicycle, take their tackle box, take their fishing pole, and go. And they learned how to tie knots, how to take fish off their hook, how did to they learn take how to picture. clean them? So we do catch, <laughs> we do catch and release. That's actually on our, in our ethical angling slideshow that we do at the beginning of the week on day one. We call it CPR. 
They remember it because they're like, I have to do what to that fish? I don't want to breathe in that fish's mouth. But it's catch, photo, release. So we teach catch and release fishing. But we, again, we do go over the different kinds of fish here in Florida that you are allowed to keep. And we show them, you know, a surprisingly small number of kids in Hillsborough County are comfortable with using rulers. This has become my new really? personal. This is my new personal thing that children in Hillsborough County need to learn how to measure things. That's really? just that's just my own take on no, what I've I, observed I, so far as new to being in education. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they need to learn to to be able to clean their catch. Well, we do dissections. So fish dissections is actually one of the things that we do. They love it. Kids love. They look at you and they're like, "You're gonna let me." Do it? And I'm like, well, yeah. You're going to give me a knife? I'm like, yeah. Should I not trust you? Is there something <laughs> that you should tell me? And so we, we, we have them do an oath at the beginning of the dissections where they raise their right hand. <laughs> and they solemnly swear not to abuse the tools. The tools are real. The tools are sharp. They will not hurt the fish. They will not hurt themselves. And they will not hurt their neighbor. And we go through all the internal and external anatomy. And then at the end, because you're only cutting open one side of the fish, then we turn the fish over and they can fillet it. So they do learn how to fillet a fish, even if it's not one they're going to eat because it was already frozen. I, I can tell you right now, <laughs> when I fillet a fish, you can actually read a newspaper through it. That's my Scots background. It wouldn't leave nothing there. There you go. <laughs> but then nothing goes to waste in the Gulf of Mexico. No, it's all recycled one way or the other. You put that dead fish back in the water and Thousands of little beasties come and eat. That's right. Everything's the the algae's there, the bacteria are there, the small. So what does it there. cost for one of these classes? So our again, the school field trips are free. If you are a teacher grades three through twelve, you can just call up and, and schedule your appointment. Okay. It's public schools, private schools, charter schools, charter schools, home schools. It does not matter. It can be a 4-H club. It could be a scout troop. It could be a church group. It does not yeah, matter. No matter. As long as it is an arranged group visit through yeah. our facility, those trips are free. And that's what I came to when I went there. I was totally impressed with the, with the instruction. <laughs> I, I wish now that I could give the lady credit who did the, did the class, but she did an excellent job on it. So. And I've been around fish and water and that <laughs> a long, long time. About once a quarter, we're going to try and offer a community event. So we did, um, what did we do? We did a youth and family fishing day in the spring. And then our division of marine fisheries management ran a women's fishing clinic. Now you say youth May. and family, is that everybody can come? Yeah. Mom, dad, so whatever. mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, kids. Kids. Kids need to be there. <laughs> the youth part is important. Even if you have to rent one. <laughs> yeah. So our the funding for the facility comes from the state government. So Florida Fish and Wildlife is a state agency. And part of our funding does come from the state budget. But the other part of our funding comes from the Fish and Wildlife Foundation of Florida, which is a non-for-profit organization that supports FWC programs. So a lot of the grant money that was used to obtain our equipment or to obtain our fishing rods, to obtain our kayaks, that was through foundation funds where it specifies this is to be used for youth programming. So, so if, if they come in and they want to go through the one program where they go home with the tackle box and rod and reel and that sort of thing. So it's, summer with summer camp, yeah. the summer day camp programs, there is a small fee. Yeah. We, we charged $190 for one week of day camp. For a whole week. Yeah. And okay. that was 8 to 5, so that way it should fit in somewhere with someone to drop off That'd if they have to lunches. work, too. <laughs> well, no. The, they bring the, a lunch? The fee is basically so I can hire summer staff. OK. So we're a non-for-profit. So I have to charge the day camp fee so that I can hire camp counselors. Right. So there's incentive to get a full camp. <laughs> I need to get the registration fees in so that I can afford to hire the camp counselor. Well, not only that, but you're, you're around water. There's all kinds of safety issues and things of that nature. Yeah, all of our staff are, so when we do our kayaking programs, you go out with an ACA, American Canoe Association, certified kayak instructors. We also have lifeguards on staff. Our fish, the fishing programs, you know, you go through a salt, our staff go through a saltwater fish camp training program themselves. Do they actually go fishing? Yes. So they're, they're, 
They get in boats to go fishing, or so they're fishing the, from the shore. Or? With this, both. It depends on the on, depends on the program. Okay. The way the youth network is set up. So all around the state, there's about four or five places that are run by FWC as a field trip site. The Suncoast Youth Conservation Center is the only FWC marine science facility. Throughout the state, regardless of what partner you go to in the network, the deal is, is they're going to learn conservation education. There will be a lesson woven into their time at my center to learn about a conservation component of taking care of Tampa Bay in some way. Part of every trip is we're going to build time into their visit so that they will actually also get a chance to practice and participate Have some in fun. that recreational skill. Because the deal is, if you come to our site as a third grader, and you sit through all this stuff, and you learn about fishing, you learn how to dissect a fish, and then you get a chance to go outside and actually go fishing, they start to learn this skill, and they can hone on that recreational skill, and they can take it with them for the rest of their life. I cannot remember a time in my life, I mean, going back, as long as my memory will let me, and some people question that, that I didn't fish. Exactly. My grandpa taught me to fish. I, I learned He's to fish mine. as a little one with my dad yep. you know, years and years early. And, you know, I had to come down here and learn to fish salt water, which is an entirely different skill. Completely different, yes. I mean, I'm from Pennsylvania, so I grew up freshwater <laughs> fishing. Completely different. Always knew I liked the ocean. It just drew me in. The fish were bigger, more colorful, more plentiful. We're, we're running down on time, so I don't want to miss something that you want to talk about. So is there something that we haven't talked about yet that you'd really like to be sure to get across? Just that um, I think that the Suncoast Youth Conservation Center and the whole Florida Conservation Technology Center here in Apollo Beach, which again is that partnership between Tampa Electric Company, the Florida Aquarium, and Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, it's a really unique and new opportunity for folks here in the Bay Area to come and see and get a chance to get out of the classroom, come get your hands dirty. And by having that experiential time in nature, you're going to have a bigger impact on today's youth. And they're going to go away with something that hopefully connects with them, that it builds that sense of stewardship into their wanting to take care of Tampa Bay. What if people were driving around and they just wanted to stop in and look around. It happens, and that's fine. <laughs> we're, 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 there's usually somebody there. We do have an exhibit hall in the front room. They, that people they, you can you have look a gate at, that closes, it so is I'm a assuming. Locked gate, yeah. <laughs> if the gate's closed, you're out of business for Correct. that time. But if the gates are open, then can people just come in and wander around the facility and you see can't. it? Yeah, you can come into the building just to kind of get an overview okay. of what we're doing. But because it is youth programming, we have youth on site. I have to be careful about who's wandering around. So. I also notice that there's a cove or something behind the building. It looks like it goes out to the bay. We do. We've got a five-acre saltwater pond on site. We have an actual salt marsh that was planted, and all of that is connected into the Tidal Creek. It's a natural Tidal Creek called Newman's Branch Creek. So it's not an actual. It's not a man-made dredged canal that was put into the area. We're actually located right off of an original tidal tributary to the bay. I noticed where you are in Apollo Beach actually has a beach, by the way. It does. They spent a lot of money, and they built this beach. You're not allowed to swim there. Doesn't make any sense <laughs> to me. All the other counties in the state allow you to swim in their water, but I guess they figure we're not bright enough to swim without having a lifeguard. But uh, it's a beautiful place to go look at yeah. at the end of Paula Beach Boulevard, turn right, run it to the end, and there's a really nice beach. Are you tied into that same tidal area they built there? It's got to be, isn't it? Yes, we are. So we are from our launch site. It's about a 20-minute paddle to get from the kayak launch out to an observation tower. We've got a place where we can anchor up if you want to go up the tower and observe out over the marshes, look out over the Tampa Bay waterways. But for kayaking groups that are doing pretty well and want to keep paddling, we can actually, the Apollo Beach Preserve, that county park, is one of our destinations in the distance so that when we're doing a kayaking program, we stop at the tower, we learn about wetlands and why these mangrove habitats are important, 
and what role they serve and how they affect you every day and why they're important to us. And you get to the, the and then towers we go, only by, by boat, right? No, actually, no? We, there's actually nature trails now really? that connect all the way from the Manatee Viewing Center to the north down to our building on the south. Everything is connected by trails on the inside. Of course, Manatee Viewing Center this it's time seasonal. of year is closed. Correct. But they can come into your place and walk the nature trails? Not only when the Manatee Viewing Center is open. It's only open to the public when the Manatee Viewing Center is okay. open to the public. Just didn't want a crowd of people. Yeah, going down exactly. Want to go walk your nature But we, trail. On the, because we're on the south end of that property is where we're located, we've got access to all the acreage in between. And our, that Apollo Beach Preserve Park is a, we, we will kayak over there. We all, we'll do coastal cleanups over there. So if we've got a group of strong paddlers, we take the trash bags with us and we teach them the importance of why we shouldn't have plastic in our ocean and the bad things that it's doing to our water. And then we take a good stretch break out on the beach and have them pick up trash and then we bring it back and recycle it. Yeah, we, we moved into Apollo Beach from the north in, in 2000. Actually, well, Christmas in 99, but 2000. And I've watched that Apollo Beach Nature Park change dramatically from that time. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm new to the area, so I don't know how the Apollo Beach Park It wasn't there. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> that whole area was, was built up, and, and it was funny to watch it grow because I honestly didn't know what they were doing. It's sort of like they were piling sand over here and sand over here, but then there wasn't any sand here, and <laughs> it's really come a long way. Are you talking about our site? No, the oh the right, preserve. The, the, the preserve at the yeah. end of Apollo Beach Boulevard. Yeah, it is. They're they're working on that continuously. And I don't know how many they put a lot of money into more than several million, I'm sure. Yeah, I've learned with construction beach. a million doesn't get yeah, you no much. Way, no. <laughs> you wish you'd think, wow, that's a lot of money, but whew, when you start building things and doing things at the coast. Apollo Beach is a good neighborhood. It's oh, yeah, really we've nice had place. great support from the neighbors. We're trying to do our best to come up with new ways to reach out to the community, to get more the word out, let them know that we're available for field trips, let them know we offer a summer camp. Do you need so volunteers? We do. We actually just logged some volunteer hours this morning. So they could call the call and volunteer the yeah, number they see on the screen. And they could go on our website. There's actually a volunteer form on our website, uh, fyccn.com. If you Super. look on the right-hand side, you click on the Sun Coast. You just click what you're interested in volunteering, and it will email us. Well, Dr. G, I'm so happy that we finally, we and you it. braved the storm to get here today. <laughs> we did it. But, but I personally want to come back over and look at it some more because there are so many beautiful things to see. Ladies and gentlemen, really, you should give it a chance and go and look at the, the uh, conservation area, Sun Coast Youth Conservation Center. That's it. So much going on there. And I assume much more in the future. Yes, it's changing every day. Kathy Gendon, thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it very much. It was fun. I'm Bill Hodges. You're unique. You're special. You're great. Tell yourself so often because you are, you know. And we'll see you on the next Spotlight on Government.